Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow Earth Travelers. Obix here, coming at you today from FTB Revelation. How y'all doing today? So last time we made these mushroom, or this mushroom farm that produces the red and the brown mushrooms, and I told you we'd see what we were, why we were doing this, because like, who needs mushrooms, really? Who need that many mushrooms? We got a lot of mushroom. So let's get started now i have moved this over here. i'm being very sneaky about keeping my camera pointed this direction because i've done a few things done a little work off camera and when we turn around you will see oh the room has gotten a little bit bigger and i have moved them over here uh so let's check them out 2048 red mushrooms 2048 brown mushrooms plus the machine is completely Lay back up on both sides. So fantastic. Uh, we'll overnight AFK took care of that. Now we had the machine over here. And remember there used to be a wall right here. And I've since dug all of this out. All the way around. And just for point of reference. If I come in this door. This newly created door. You'll see the room that you're familiar with. So we have our terminal here. We have all our stuff over here. And this is our main room here. So I did close off this door. I can't quite close off this wall. I can put some conduit facades there, but I can't close off the wall itself. But I did close off the door and moved it over here uh, temporarily and dug all of this mess out. I moved our uh, canola processing. You know, it was just a big old jumbly mess down here. Remember all that? Uh, we would come in this door right here, and it was just like generators stacked on generators and stuff pipes coming out of the ceiling right here, and it was just craziness. I've just cleaned this up a little bit. Uh, still have the two crate or two drawers, just like we did. They were over there. Uh, there, it's being piped in from the farm upstairs. I added three cloches just to make sure it stayed uh, full. We've gotten this thing back up to 2048 canola, and remember we were getting rice as or. Uh, string as well that was also coming in from our cloches that were upstairs i've knocked out all those cloches upstairs brought three of them down here to produce canola and brought a bunch more over here we'll get into that in a minute uh, of course we got a press here our fermenters set up a double fermenter we only had one before so i've got two now that keeps us up uh, constantly producing here added a drum full of uh, some extra just in case and of course all of our generators our cranking with the canola and yeah, don't forget we got the big diesel up there as well this so this is really isn't necessary but it's always fun to have extra power so then we're inputting into our power cell network um, and as well we have a capacitor up here with 5 million uh, rf and that is feeding our powering our cloches and our canola farm that's upstairs so we are good to go. I did add a power monitor on here just to see if we were getting net gains or net losses. And of course we are gaining, so we're good. Now, I've also moved several of our cloches down here. I uh, added a few new cloches, uh, but I've removed all the ones that were upstairs, minus the ones that were running the diesel generator. Those are still over there. But all those extra ones we had by the front door, I've moved down here, added a couple extra, and we're producing a few things, basic, similar, very similar stuff that we were producing upstairs. So we're getting potatoes, carrots, wheat, which has the off, offshoot of seeds, beetroot, which also has an offshoot of seeds. We're doing cactus, melons, and pumpkins. And today we're going to make use of these items, as well as those mushrooms, because there is a power system in the pack that I have never used before, and I want to give it a go. It's not going to be great. It's going to be kind of like our little canola farm over here. It's nothing fantastic, but by golly, it sits there and does its job. That's all I'm looking for. So I hollowed out a huge space so we could pop it down here, and it should be self-sufficient. Now, the way this guy works is you use a machine and you pump in a list from a list of items uh, and then it produces a type of biofuel from those items and then burns the biofuel 
Uh, so we are absolutely going to work on that today. It is from the mod industrial fork going. Let's get suited back up here. And let's take a look at this. So industrial and bio. Now what we need are these two guys right here. So we need the bioreactor and the biofuel generator. Now the bioreactor is the thing that will uh, take in items and produce the biofuel based off of that. And then of course the biofuel generator will actually produce the power. So let's go make a couple of these. Uh, let's make the reactor and the generator. So come in here and let's just, I uh, know we're going to need a spider eye. We don't have that yet. So let's go ahead and get one of those. We have no parts. So what do we need? We need some sugar, a spider eye, and a brown mushroom. I think I know where we have some brown mushrooms. We should be okay there. Uh, I do have some in here as well. Uh, when I move those machines over, we uh, definitely got, you know how hard it is to tell the difference between brown and red mushrooms when you're colorblind? I mean, it is crazy. Why has it got to be so difficult? Uh, so we need brown mushroom. We need some sugar. I've got some sugar cane in there, and we need a spider eye. Let's get that. Uh, where's my spider eye? Surely somewhere I have a spider eye. There we go. We could go down to the mob farm and grab one, but I'm sure we had some up here. And I've got some sugar cane somewhere. Where did I put my sugar cane? Oh, I've got it over here. Boom. There we go. And let's just boom got it put all those in there that there that there there's our spider eye bam now let's see what else we're in need of okay so we need some more sugar oh well, we had sugar cane in here there it is right there boopity boppity boop and do 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 Ooh, slime balls so we can go grab those let's grab those they're out here i've got to get moved in over there i'm gonna have to lay out some more drawers uh and then start moving stuff into here because it's getting old having to go back and forth all the time uh let's see machine frame that's going to be the easier one let's go with that boop boop and boop Boop, boop, boop. Fantastic. There we go. Bioreactor. Now we got to get one of these bad boys. Three pistons. One, two, three. Boom. Done. Uh, and there's some blaze rods. I did go harvest some blaze rods off camera as well. Because uh, remember, we needed them before and we were a little bit low. So I've just kind of replenished a little bit. Uh, not a huge amount, but uh, some. This should get us going anyway. I knew we were going to need them today. And we're going to need another one of these guys. So we need one of those. And we need one of these. And let's see what we're missing. The furnace looks like. Bingo, bango, bongo. And done and dusted. Fantastic. Now we're most definitely going to need some conduit. So let's go ahead and get some conduit. Uh, some power, some item. I don't think we'll need any fluid. Yeah, we should be okay. So, pop out here. And we're going to take a look at these guys. So we've got the reactor and the generator. So, the reactor and the generator. Now, the reactor is the guy that you put the items in and it turns those items into fuel. So if we come over here and we grab, uh, for example, a tater, and we drop that tater in there, this guy is producing 80 millibuckets, 80, eh, words, 80 millibuckets per item. It's 0% efficiency. Now if I grab a carrot, we're now at 12.5% efficiency, and we're producing 90 millibuckets per item. Now, if I grab another tater, I can't add it here because I already have a tater, and you notice we're still at 12.5, so it didn't do any good. I have to add unique items, 
We've seen this before in other mods where it wants unique items. Now, if I look at wheat and beetroot, you notice they don't go in there. It says, no, no, we don't want those. But what it does want is the seeds. Aha, notice the seeds it does accept, and we're up to 37.5%. Fantastic. Uh, so you can bet if it wanted the seeds for wheat and beet, it probably wants the seeds for pumpkin and melon as well. Wah, wah, wah. So we have to split the melon and harvest the pumpkin. Now if I take the pumpkin, dump that in there, we're now up to 50%. But I've got to get this melon split up. So I take that and I axe it. We're going to split it. If I take the splits and craft it, we're going to get the seeds. And then if I put the seed in there, we're now at 62.5%. Fantastic. Another item it wants is cactus, but it doesn't want the cactus itself. It wants the dye. Oi. Why? Why do you do this to me, game? Why am I throwing things on the ground? Uh, why do you do this to me, game? So, if I take a furnace and I pop cactus in there of course it is going to get us a die and if I pop the die in there you notice this bar went up again we're at 75 percent now there's two remaining items and we're out of items over here dun, 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 dun. guess what they are red mushrooms and brown mushrooms if I pipe those guys in, we are now producing 160 millibuckets per item at a 100% efficiency. So this is the best it can be. So we've got to pump in all these unique items. As you can see, I've got them laid out here, what items we can use. And I've got a few things made up so we can uh, do some work here. Uh, I did forget one machine because I forgot we're going to have to take these uh, melons I totally forgot we are going to have to find a way to take these and cut them up. We can't just uh, toss them in our inventory like this and turn them into the seeds like we can with the pumpkin. Uh, so I'm going to put these in here as placeholders. There we go. So we have all of the items and I am going to go ahead and put in a die I think as well. Um, I did have kind of pre-planned some machines out a little bit. Uh, let's just pop him right there and get me a die going. There we go. And pop that back off. And let's get the die in here. Uh, boom. So now we have placeholders for all the goodies. Uh, so we can reclaim this guy. Now we need to pump out the biofuel this guy will create. It'll put it right here. We need to pump that out into this guy, which is just a generator, and it's going to take that biofuel and turn it into uh, RF. So, kind of done with this now. Let's put these away for the time being. Like it so. And we should be able to just get rid of all that out of our inventory. Fantastic. Uh, except for the red and the brown mushroom, those are going to have to go over here. Of course, these are all full now, so yay. Uh, you guys just go despawn over there. I have enough of y'all. Okay, so we are going to need a way to cut up that watermelon. I did forget about that, so we need to come up with a way to do that. Now I'm out of beetroots. I'm going to have to go over here and get some food because I was eating beets. The Lord knows I have enough of them. Uh, what have I got in here I can munch on? Do, do, do. I got some bread. Let's take some bread. That's always good. Oop, we just going to open that door a few times. Now we need to come up with a way to split that melon up. So let's take a look at melon and see what the options are. To make melon... Uh, 82 different ways to harvest it, apparently. 
and we could use a thermal expansion factorizer and it'll turn it into nine slices interesting I thought the sawmill would do it as well but I guess not yeah so factorizer will also put it back together interesting so we're gonna need a factorizer so what do we need for that so we need this guy easy enough let's go ahead and just look up factorizer and we need two iron gear and we need a central core whatever this thing is called device frame and that may be it put one of those in just in case now this is another device I've never used so we're gonna take a look at this guy too boom factorizer well it looks really simple combine or split hmm, there you go easy peasy lemon squeezy nothing to it but to do it so let's pop out here and grab our item conduits and I should grab some scaffolding because these are like three four block tall things Let's just grab some dirt to use a scaffolding head on over here and get these up here now we need to process the pumpkin the melon and the cacti yeah 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 and let's grab our machines out of here uh, boop boop. Thank you. Alright, let's start with... Hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, pumpkins. All we need to do with a pumpkin is, is craft them. They're pretty simple, right? So I think we're just going to go right here. And put an auto crafter. We pump them into the auto crafter. That should craft them into the seeds. We spit the seeds back in the system. We're done. So now, what about melon? Melon's a two part process. So we're going to need to put it into the factorizer. We're going to need to go out from the factorizer into the crafter. Now, I'm not sure if we can do that without a pipe. We may need a pipe between these two. We'll see. Now, the cactus, we're just going to cook that. So we just need a furnace. Boom. Excellentante. Now, I'm going to put some DDF my floppers here in the front. So I can get up here and see what I want to do. Now let's get these conduit in here. We're gonna go ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. I think we're gonna go ba -doop, ba -doop. but we're gonna turn these off like so. So we just have the original three. Be quiet, if I don't know what he's talking to you. Now gum work contact me. Middle of the flipping night. It is 1 a.m. my time on a Friday night. What are they bothering me for? Uh, so let's get these actually hmm. hmm hmm this actually might be a good way to get stuff in just bring it down like that then I can come back this way ba -doo -ba -doo, ba -doo -ba -doo. oh you know what I could take them out there too ba -doo. hello come out maybe let's see Yeah, I think this will work. I think this will work. Hmm. Okay. So. We are going to start with the. This is green. 
so we're gonna pull we're gonna start with pumpkin we're gonna pull extract pumpkin on orange of course because why wouldn't you there we go so pumpkin's gonna extract on orange and it's gonna head down this line and it's gonna insert here on orange orange yes 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 and then we want to return to the system on black so I think I want to do an extract on black and that'll be my return line for all the goodness there we go so we have the in arrow on orange, the out arrow on black. Now this guy, this is our melon. And I think we're going to go lime green. And we want to extract on the lime green. There we go. And that means we want to insert over here on the lime green. Fantastic. Now that's going to insert into this guy, and we want to pull blue in from this side, because here's our insert. We want to turn blue off everywhere else. And we want to output the kind of orange color here off this way into this guy. Hopefully he'll fit. Now we can turn off everything but one port. There we go. So everything it'll get, it'll just go into a one by one and craft and spit out the goodies. Now this is an output, so outputs are in black. Let's find that. There we go. Uh, we can go ahead and say always there. And we can go ahead and say always here as well. Now this guy is going to be for cactus. Now, cactus is green, but we can't use green so um, because we're using it for stuff coming over here. And we are going to connect to that in a second. We don't have to. I could go behind here. I mean, I could leave this separate. Maybe I'll do that. Um, see, I was going to just bring the line right here and come down the side and connect into here to push the items that are crafted back into the system. And that would work just fine because all these are set on extract. It would only have the ability to go here. Uh, but I could run a second line down the back of the unit and connect into the back. Um, it's kind of six of one of the six of one and half a dozen of the other. I think we'll just do that. Why not? There we go. So we'll insert on green. Or no, I was outputting on black, wasn't I? Hmm. So I guess I had planned to go into the back. Let's just do that. That way I don't have to rework everything. Uh, we'll come into the back. Uh, hello. Where's the cable? There we go. And we'll turn this one off. And we'll turn this one on. We're going to say insert, not extract. And... Fantastic. So it'll insert on black. So now we need to get items into here and out of here. This is going to be our cactus green. We can use green because we're not connect, touching that other side. So this is going to extract green. I haven't set those to always yet. Uh, we will in a minute. Uh, I just want to make sure all this is set up first. So we're going to insert on green, but we're going to extract on black. Some of these machines may not be able to insert and extract on the same side. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to give them a try and just see. So we should have an extracted. Where we do, we do. So let's come up here and turn some of these guys on. So we're going to start him, start him, and start him. Now that should start spitting items out over here. It did. Oh, why did this go not... 
I told that to be all one area. And it said, no, I'm going to do whatever the heck I feel like doing, you stupid person. Hmm, I don't remember breaking it, but okay. So now you can see we are making pumpkin seeds by the boatload. There we go, four at a time. Fantastic. Now, ooh, nothing. Why nothing? Why I not see insert lime, which is what we want. Always active on lime. Why you no go? Oh, because it's on combined mode. We need it on split mode. Now it'll take it. And, and, and of course it can't push there. Uh, that's the limitation of this block. So I'm going to have to put a pipe here. Or behind it. Could go behind it. Be easier to see. Boop. If I went back here. And we're going to do an extract always and an insert always. Fantastic. Now that's producing our melon seeds and they're getting sucked out. Fantastic. So we should be seeing a melon growth over here. Yep, we are. And then last but not least, we are dumping cactus in here, but we're not processing because we have no power over here yet. I'm surprised this factorizer doesn't need power. I mean, I'm not complaining. I just, it's a little odd. So, good news is we have power over here. In the form of a power cell. So, for the time being, we'll just put this right here and say output. That lights this bad boy up. And we should see those green dyes disappearing. And fantastic. They should be showing up in here. There we go. Awesome. So we're producing everything now we need to produce in order to run our bioreactors. So let's get these guys placed. So we need to start with this guy, the reactor. Hmm. I'm thinking I want him like here somewhere. Because I want to stretch the generators out in this space here. Uh, hmm. The question is do I just roll off the front of this like this? A little bit uh, tacky and I can't walk underneath it, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, but seems to work but I will need a filter to tell it exactly what items to bring because we do have some item extra items like the wheat and the beets the cactus melons and pumpkins we don't want those so I gotta tell it the nine things we do want so let me go get a filter I don't know if it's filters big enough hmm Oops, that's not supposed to be there. Oops, I wasn't supposed to break that. Good night. All right. Let's see. At Ender Filter. Uh, if I look at this guy. Need a hopper. Filter. Does it have nine slots? Let's see. Shift click it. Oh no, it only has five. That's not going to cut it. So we need an advanced item filter, which means we're going to need a Z-Logic controller, which means we're going to need a slice and splice. Yay! Or, uh, I think I will work on those off camera after the fact, maybe in the next episode. I think this episode's already going to get a little long. Uh, and I really want to see this guy do its thing. So let's break this stuff here. And for the time being, I'm going to ghetto-fy this. 
So it's not going to be very pretty. Okay, bear with me. Bear with me. I will clean it up. I just I want to see it work. Remember, I've not done this before either. So, so we're just going to put one of these on the front of everything we need to bring with us. There we go. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's our nine items. Fantastic. So let us take this guy. And we're just going to put him right here. Because I'm going to run that conduit right there. I'm going to tell this guy to insert. Fantastic. And then I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say extract always, 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 always. I say this is a, a jank ghetto way to do it, but it'll do it. It saves me from having to build another machine right now. Love it, love it, love it, love it. It's getting all the goodness. So now we need to get these two items over here as well. Uh, I don't know. Since we Janktastic ran these, I'm going to go ahead and Janktastic run these as well for now. Uh, but we will clean this up. Trust me. Again, we're just proving the concept. So for right now, that's all I want to do. We'll find a way to purdy it up later. Let's just get it there and working. So we're going to insert Extract always, extract always, fantastic. Now, this guy is at 100% efficiency, he's producing 160 millibuckets per item, but he needs power as well. Isn't it ironic that the thing that makes power needs power? Uh, but, that tis what it is. Bing, bang, boom. Now he's got power. And there he goes. He is producing. How about that? Our first bucket, almost bucket and a half of biofuel. Then every time he runs through an item, you see he's not, he doesn't run super quick. So we don't need these guys to be just cranking out the items. That's why these analog crafters are okay, because they're, they're going to outpace this guy uh, look at that already four and four and a half buckets of biofuel fantastic so I lied I am gonna need a fluid pipe because oops I need to fluid out to this generator right there so let's go get us a fluid conduit and bingo bango bungo insert and we're going to extract always oh yeah look at the purple fill it right up eight buckets worth and he is producing power at 160 RF fantastic that ain't half bad remember I think these guys are 120 each uh, actually we can see that if we just come click on them or no 80 each for 120 ticks so this guy is producing considerably more, you know, basically double uh, the amount of power for that block per every, you know, so we'd need six of those, or we'd need uh, two of those to make one of these, what I'm trying to say, good grief. However, this guy has more than enough biofuel left over, more than enough. So we could add some additional of these generators. Now, taking a look at the book here, and this may take me a minute to find it. Uh, where is the do do do? I can never find this. There we go. And generator, biofuel generator. So the biofuel generator produces power when provided with biofuel, which we're doing. A bucket of biofuel will produce 160 RF per tick, a total 640,000 RF. About 28 generators can be run from one bioreactor. We have one 
bioreactor. So we could put 27 more of these guys about, so it says, out here. Now how cool is that? Hence why I have all this big open space, because I can just stick a crap ton of these guys here and then feed the power back into the system. So all I gotta do is take this power line right here and go bippity boppity boo. And now he's kind of powering himself. So if I break that line, you'll see he's staying full of power. And he's still producing power. So he's just looping the power back. Fantastic. So in theory, I should be able to take this guy out, put that back. He will stay lit up and continue to produce. The only thing is I need to take that conduit like so. Now the these conduits do hold power, which is why this guy wasn't losing power. Eventually, if I break this, eventually it will go down uh, once. You see right there? Once the con the power in the conduits dissipates, which does take a little bit of time, but now he should self-power. Fantastic. So then we can take something like this and instead of out we'll set it to in. I said instead of out we'll set it to in. And now we're sending power into our storage system as well. So we're using this generator to power itself. You know, to power it, its own productions this over here and this right here as well as sending power into the storage system but we need a whole bunch more of these I'm thinking like 27 so let me see what I can come up with and I'll bring you back seven more of these things. I don't know how this is going to work, but we sure enough going to find out. So I think what we're going to do is let's take this stuff away to start with. What I want to do is just run them down like this. And let's get the fluid flowing. Oh yeah. So we get a little bit of fluid in each one of these. They're all producing go go juice now. And let's see if we can get the go go juice to come out. Nice. Producing, producing. 
we just look up at the top up there, we can see that they're all producing. Lovely. This is just the top row. We got a whole bottom row down here. Look at this thing. If each one of these is producing 160 and we have 28 of them, that is a ton of power. So all we got to do is slap this guy here on in. And he's full, but when he needs power, he can definitely draw it from this system here. And we'll just make sure he's set to insert. That is awesome. So we definitely need to clean it up. It is a little jank with these cables like this. Uh, for sure. Can't get up there. Uh, definitely jank with this. We'll definitely clean that up as well. But it does work. And the proof of concept is good. Good, good, good. But I do think that is all the time I got for today. I sure do appreciate you guys coming to hang out as we build these bio generators from industrial for going. And until next time, you guys get out there and make some noise. See ya.